Let's talk about measuring coffee grounds distributions to better understand grinders and how coffee works. So this is a typical image and the aim is to get this cumulative distribution out. So you can use a particle, uh, laser particle scanner to do this, but they're very expensive. And one way you can do it at home or one, the way I've done it is using imaging. So to do this, I put some coffee on a piece of paper as a, as a white medium, and I use the paper to calibrate my image. So in this case, the paper is a slightly bent, but usually it's not. And uh, I end up having a calibrated board. Then I um, threshold the particles and you can zoom in on the particles and, and measure the sizes. So this can, present some challenges. And so I'm going to talk about some of those challenges and, and how I overcome them and how you can also measure your coffee ground distributions uh, with a couple steps. So part of the challenges are uh, coffee is sticky, imaging is tricky, um, scanner printers don't use them, and adaptive thresholding is very helpful, especially to normalize for lighting conditions. So we'll start with uh, how coffee is sticky. So uh, the finer particles of coffee generally stick to larger particles of coffee, which is why sifting takes time uh, or takes more time. And I've tried different things to remove that stickiness. Like I tried using a, a sieve to um, um, get the coffee particles to separate and fall on the piece of paper. Uh, the problem is they'd still kind of stick together. And so I went to something I just called dusting. I, I have this little brush for the um, niche grinder and I tap the, the, the particles and it, it uh, breaks them up and removes that tension. And I've done multiple tests to show that um, I'm, I'm getting a pretty good measurement and that it's a repeatable measurement. So what's nice is that if you use this measurement technique, then you can um, look at relative differences between what your your current grinding setting is at and what a different grinding set setting is at. So I still haven't done a comparison to a laser particle scanner, but I've gotten a lot of insights from just doing it this way. So I place the uh, coffee sample down and then I tap with the, um, the brush until everything is uh, evenly spread out on the page. So uh, there's a it's hard to see the difference here, but the main difference is in the, um, when measuring the finer particles, because uh, if you don't do this, the tiny particles stick to larger particles and you get um, a bad measurement. Imaging is also tricky. So I calibrate using the wide angle camera and on my uh, phone, I have the wide angle and the uh, tele. So uh, I calibrate, I hold the camera in place. I know there's a, an offset, uh, a, a zoom difference. And um, then I, use, I zoom in and take another photo. So I use the wide to, to calibrate the, the tele photo. And then I'm able to see a little bit finer on the particle size. The other problem is lighting. Um, the, we, even when taking a photo, you can cause a shadow on the image and, and that can cause problems. So I usually try to dim the lights in um, my room and use the flash. And that uh, usually works out. Now this, again, this piece of paper is a, a bad example of not having a flat piece of paper. It's a little bent. Um, but uh, I try to get a new piece of paper each time. So let's talk about scanner printers. So there's been some suggestion to use a scanner because maybe you can get better uh, readings. Um, you can remove that lighting variable. So um, you gotta be really careful with scanners. This is a, a scanner image and you can see that there's a shadow cast along these uh, coffee particles. Um, and there's a shadow because um, the way scan the scanner works. The problem is that shadow is the same um, intensity level as the finer particles of coffee. So you have to change your threshold to, to remove the shadow. And as a result, you lose the finer particles. And that's because 
a um, scanner, a uh, printer scanner, operates the same way as a uh, 3D imaging system. So you have a, a line of light projected and you have your sensor or your camera at a different angle. And because of the angular difference, uh, you assume that the everything on the piece of paper is flat, and so you shouldn't see any change in uh, like Z height. Uh, but when you have a bump like this, what happens is you end up with a little shadow, um, and um, that's that's why you shouldn't use uh, laser scanners like this. But you should do some adaptive thresholding. Um, so. One of the issues is uh, you can see these particles if you, uh, I, I took uh, one image of, of the smaller particles and you can see that if you use a, a larger, um, a more global threshold, you'll miss some of these bumps. But there's these tiny bumps in there that are distinguishable from the background if you look at localized regions to do your thresholding. So I uh, do this by, I have my, my uh, the, I make my grayscale image from the product of all the, the three planes of the RGB image. Then I use a, a mean plus an offset of standard deviation as a uh, baseline threshold to drop out noise from the background. Um, and so you can see the simple threshold at, at the bottom left. And then uh, you can do this row wise and column wise and then combine them. And then as a result, I'm able to see some of these smaller particles. Uh, the trick is getting the right threshold, of course, even for, for this. So uh, I don't have an app out there, but uh, Jonathan Ganyi has an app where you can measure this. And I've compared the output of his app to the output of my app, and, and they're um, uh, very similar. So with his app, you can tweak a lot of these thresholds. And if you input using a, a protocol and, and a good image, you can get some good data out of this and, and use it very well. Um, so, the thing I really loved about using it is looking at Fine's migration. So this is an average of each each line is an average of nine samples of distributions, and I was able to see pretty well that um, the smaller particles were were not moving so much in the puck. Um, and then I did this analysis where I showed that there is a slight amount of migration, but it's not much. Um, so it's a, it's a very valuable tool to be able to use this and, and, and iterate on uh, understanding.